So despite, you know, the rough year trading, you know, stock like we mentioned, stock still almost double from its IPO price. So the valuation, and I know this is where you harp on things sometimes, is high. Uh, it, it trades about 5.8 times expected 2016 sales, right, based on that guidance, and 97 like times forward earnings. So I'm sorry, what ju- was that? 97? I, I plugged my ears, but I still it's heard just that. Just shy of triple digits, which enjoyed for pretty much all of 2015. Um, but yeah, there it's it's high. I cannot I my, deny that. I hope our audience uh, heard my my sigh there. So keep in mind that's a hefty premium to most other restaurants, and that includes the full spectrum, and like the traditional leaders like a McDonald's to the newer generation of like Chipotle, Choice Holdings. Like that's a premium to all of those guys, and um, with I, burgers, as you can imagine, yeah. uh, at those levels, investors, you know, that's driven by really high growth. Um, either top or bottom line or both, and so for them to have this outlook for 2016, things slowing down, it doesn't surprise me that stocks trading down, and that investors should be concerned or you know thinking about where that valuation comes into play or where it comes back into more reasonable levels. Um, and I think a really another another really bearish signal uh, for investors was you know they're in fourth quarters last year, even continuing through the the first few months of 2016, a lot of insider selling. Uh, it seems like uh, you know a lot of these bigger uh, shareholders, kind of, they know where the stock <laughs> potentially is going, and they're cashing out now. So it's definitely a concern. And uh, you know, on a positive note, I will say that the company's in a pretty strong uh, position to invest in their um, global growth plans for new restaurants. Um, they've said. There's 84 stores currently. They had previously stated goal of about 450 restaurants as their uh, mm, on you know, for the for yeah. the system, and uh, their cash balance jumped from less than three million dollars to over 70 million 70 million dollars last year. So you know, definitely lots of money to to put into these new locations. I wonder how much of that came from the IPO proceeds. Kind of sort of maybe. Mm, I don't know. I don't uh, recall. My big complaint, and when did I write that article? Google Motley Fool Sean O'Reilly. Shake Shack, if you want, listeners. Um, my big thing is, uh, as our listeners may or may not be aware, be aware I have very uh, simple food tastes. I have a very Midwestern palate. Yes. Um, Vince, I'm sure can. <laughs> I give I give Sean a lot of grief because he sometimes I think eats things a little too plain. You gotta adventure out a little bit more. With there, you. there is nothing I love more than. Cheeseburger and fries. Mm-hmm. I consider myself a cheeseburgers and fries connoisseur. And do you enjoy a Shake Shack burger? And this fries? is just it. Shakes, amazing. Burgers, awesome. Fries, great. All. I mean, it's a little pricey, but it's fine. Um, you know, you're probably getting what you pay for. My thing is, um, there is no food that is more commoditized in the United States of America than burgers and fries. I can go get a burger and fries. I don't know. We could go to the Italian deli. We could go to the trademark bar up the road. We could go. I can think of probably five places I can get a burger well, and just fries within a few blocks. Within five minutes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The advantage, the competitive advantage that Shake Shack offers is vastly imperial, like a Chipotle, which they they seem to got the. Well, Shake Shack has the fast casual Shake Shack has thing going it for has it, its brand power right now, and the fact that it's very, very popular. Its location, you know, its new location openings are known to have lines out the door and down right. the block. And when you have that kind of that kind of consumer, you know, diner following, it it, it definitely helps and contributed to, I'm sure, a lot of the hype with the stock price hitting ninety plus dollars last right. year. So I'm not, you know, there's definitely no discounting the fact that they are like king of the heap right now in terms of burger world, um, but enough to justify where they're trading. Do at you do you think that outlook. like an L A location, which I'm glad they're doing that because that's obviously a natural jump, but do you think an L A location can get anywhere close to the um, the revenues of their original location in Central Park? Because I understand that that one's like. Yeah, but that's, the, uh, that's tough to call because there's like location. a you know that has such a storied history. Because you know, it remember, was like a it was literally a shack in Central Park. It that's was like, it, it started there. as like a hot dog cart. Yeah, and so you know when I lived in New York, everybody talked about Shake Shack, and this was before the IPO. Mm-hmm. It was you know this New York play, this very New York centric like right. Uh, it had that feel to it. It was very very popular. They've been able to I think replicate a lot of that worldwide. <laughs> 